Hi there guys and welcome to another Train Sim 2017 video. Today we're in something new and a little bit special for you all. Uh, one of my other recent purchases is the Class 222, the Meridian from Just Trains. I um, haven't had a play with it yet, this will be my first go with it and it will be your first time seeing it on my channel as well. So let's get going and see how we get on with this thing. I'm quite excited, it should have some good little features. I'm hoping it's not just a rehash of the Voyager, which I suspect it might be, but we'll see. Good evening driver, please open the doors and then set up your cab prior to departure. Departing at 1925, bound for Derby. We will stop at Bedford at 2000 for a crew change. Okay. I think the cab's pretty much set up. Let's sort us out with some lights. Let's go night, actually. Dusky nighty. Yeah. We'll give that a go. Um, master key in. Now, this should be... Yeah. Now, I've read the manual which is rare for me. I read a bit of the manual. I got to write forward controls. And it said, number one, GSMR radio. Self-test displays on master key insertion. Otherwise, this is non-operational in this simulation. I was pretty sure that there was a big hype about this having a semi-operational GSMR. Not like you could talk to people, but a bit like they did with the NRN. It's the same thing. I'd expect it to do something. And it doesn't seem to. Which is a bit annoying. Uh, the NRN thing won't work, probably because the AP pack, but that's sort of by the by. It has come on and gone to green, which is nice. Um, SDO, non-operational in this simulation. Okay. So, so far... I've got Voyager. Have a look at the outside. We're in the old school Midland mainline livery, which I do like. Now I'm not sure if the AP pack's installed or not on this. I can't remember if I've put it back in and I haven't got and reinstalled. Usually what I'll do is if I get something I'll reinstall the AP pack just to make sure, but I haven't with this because I was in a bit of a rush caught with time, so we'll just give it a go as it is. And because this is a Just Trains default scenario, of course there will be uh, either no AI or shockingly bad AI. Um, a 166 will probably make an appearance, a 67 I'm sure will make an appearance. Uh, still haven't actually got to talk to Midland Mainline actually, I haven't got to the bottom of my weird invisible 66 yet. Everything seems to be right, Geo's all seem in place. But we might pass that on the way, we might not. Okay, right away, driver next stop, Bedford at 2000. Excellent. Got green. DRA's off C. C, I'm good at that. Into forward. Cancel that. Remember that the D, uh, the vigilance device is on the Q key, not the E key L. I wonder if this has the same brakes as the Voyager. Nice summer's evening, let's have a little bit of cooling. Did I set that to cool? Oh. I've set it to auto. I think this may have the AP pack. Hmm. There's the ActiveX sounds. This is set in 2006, this scenario, so that phone ring wouldn't be too unusual at this time. Yes, yeah, all right. <coughs> That'll get annoying pretty quickly. Thought it was a bit pants, but all right, fair enough. 
This is also my, only my second time on the Midland Main Line. Second time actually driving anything on it. I've uh, been in to try and get that 66 to work. And I did that scenario that... So that's off with no brake input. Um, what was I waffling on about the 66? Yeah, I've been in to see and I, uh, to see if it works and also tested, I uh, did the scenario that you saw, got, you guys all saw the video of. But that's the only time I've used it. I have added the vegetation upgrade. And it's also done the track as well. It does look quite nice. Can't moan about it. Oh, 50. Instrument lights, they're down here, I think. Quite like the bluey tinge to them. I don't really like it on the 91s, but on this, it's quite nice. It's of the era. I remember having my Nokia 3310 and changing out the LEDs from green to, to blue. I used to love doing that. I used to charge a fortune to people at school for doing it. Oh, a quick word on the 319. I was kindly informed that the... 319 I was driving, the AP pack didn't work for. So, kudos to DTG. It wasn't that bad at all. I was quite liked it. But I will do a version of the, the AP one. It's pretty rapid, this thing. Good acceleration. Feels like I'm driving it, I quite like it. So the 222s themselves, while they are incredibly similar to the Voyagers, built by the same people, ordered about the same time, I think they were ordered about the same time, um, there are a few differences. There's some equipment that Voyagers have above the floor um, that 222s have in the underframe. Uh, also the front end, as you can see, is slightly different, it's not hugely different. It's the untrained eye, it's not. Oh. We have a brake fault driver, please bring the, game, the, the, the train to a settled halt once stopped. You need to move the combined brake handle to the neutral position. Do not proceed until all warning lights have extinguished and hopefully the issue won't show again. So I'm on a brake fault. I'm going into emergency. Yeah, full along. It's a brake fault and a bogey fault. Right, well, let's hope that we can reset it. And get going. So, to all lights are distinguished, isn't it? Oh, I had to move the thing into neutral tonight. 
Oh, there we go. I like that. Still not getting any power. Oh, I've broken it. Cool. Right, let's have a look. There we go. Just remembering not to put it into off. So it's not active X controls, I was getting that wrong, it's active train. So the train management, this is the list that it says in the in the manual. We'll have a play with some of this if we can. Train management, so TMS train management system, partially simulated with boot up sequence, anomaly warnings, worker driver vigilance device, auto slow speed function, automatic warning system self test. Is that really class? It's one of those features. DSD, work and DRA. Switch books down audible alarms, which is which I quite like. I don't they're they're pretty cool going. NRN GSMR C startup self test operation. Yeah, I mean it's a, I like having it there, it's a feature. I'm not gonna moan. Only a little extra helps in this sim. This route looks very nice tonight. This run. Very nice. Uh, variable speed windscreen wipers, sun blind, engine start stop, horn, driver to, gu driver to guard, signals, destination displays, hill start, just click the button on the throttle, press shift A before moving from brake power, this will keep the brakes slightly until it reaches one mile an hour, which will be released, nice, we'll have a trial of that, I wonder why my frame rates are getting a bit of a lash in there, that's a few 315 started in there, remote tail light button, um, just trains, active world, scenario, trigger support, PASCOM activation. Triggers the passenger communications alarm and applies emergency brake, resets after being stationary for 30 seconds. Fire, sounds the fire alarm, resets after 30 seconds, stationary, will come be silenced by pushing the fire alarm light. Cold start, engine fail, brake test, uh, sorry, brake fault and NRM broadcast. Brakes bleed on slowly, result after resets after 30 seconds, stationary. The only button on the NRN. Yeah. So, I mean, it's got a list of features there. I mean, to, to, realistically, though, to call the sun blind. A feature. I mean, DTG don't even do that. Let's not go there. It's very much a, two, a same as the Voyager. I wouldn't really say there's anything jumping out at me that makes it massively different. Physics-wise, yes, slightly different. In fact, the brakes worked quite well there, so... Physics-wise, it seems a vast improvement, to be honest. So yeah, these have the same... I think they've got the same engines as a Voyager, which is the QSK-19. Doesn't have. I'm sure they do. Yeah, the resistor banks. So, two twenties and these have rear static braking, which is like dynamic braking. It uses the traction motors in reverse polarity to slow the train down. It dissipates the heat through resistors on the roof. 
Uh, it does have the same bogeys as well, I think. So it's the Voyager, so it's the 220, not the Super Voyager, has the B5000 lightweight bogeys. dead zone here. So that's off at minus 5. Minus 22 isn't putting any brake on. Minus 29. Just put a brake on. Oh no, it won't be. It'll be the rear static will be kicking in, won't it? Duh. Can I get that up? No. Uh, I've just been going on about it and then I don't even remember about that myself. Because of course I'm expecting the air brakes to go on, and of course they won't, because it'll be rear static first, down until a certain speed, then it will use the two together, and then it will just be air brakes at the end. The 222s, considering they've not been around for a million years, have had their fair share of accidents and issues. Um, I can remember one off the top of my head of an axle seizing, causing a derailment. There's been a few fires. And that was to do, I think, um, EMT. It was EMT that had them at the time. Uh, basically got a bit of a roasting from the RAIB about cleaning the underside of the tracks. What it was was build up of grime around the engines and exhausts that caught fire. Do you know, I like the track upgrading this? I don't know if I'm so keen on the vegetation. It's pretty repetitive. I don't think I've tried any of these packs in the winter yet. I suppose I should, really. <coughs> so that keys that had the face transplant, isn't it? Oh, now that would be cool. That would be very gimmicky. Very cool. If I could pull the curtain across. Zero percent on pulling amps. I need to go and look at this properly. Why is that not stepped like it should be? This is a recent release. And it's all well and good having that hill start button, but if it's not stepped, I'd rather see it stepped and the hill start button work. 
Do you know what I mean? I can touch the TMS screen and get that up. I can do a GSMR count, but I can't have steps on the... Traction control. It drives me nuts. look and see if I can look up some of the other instances because there's one about it falling off jacks as well oh yeah god yeah there's one here 10th of June 2006 uh, London Sheffield train taken out of service due to a door being discovered open, open at Desborough in Northamptonshire while at speed yeah I remember that RSI RAIB probable caused by a sequence of events which should not have been possible with a traditional manually operated mechanical door. A combination of a piece of dirt incorporated in the door lock switch during manufacture and a software bug in the I remember this as well, software bug in the control system allowed the door to remain unlocked after the train called at Luton to prevent this condition being detected. <sighs> Deflation, inflation, the pneumatic door seal was initiated automatically. 110. By detectors responding to the train stopping and starting at a subsequent station, we gradually prized the door out of its socket. So on um, on meridians, what you'll find is, and quite often other trains as well, is a uh, the seal around the door is actually inflatable. So it's pneumatic. Just keep it pressurised. Oh, and then, yeah, recently, last year, yeah, the... There's a train that used to go past my home. It's the self-discharging aggregates train. It used to go past mine all the time. It comes from Cambridge quite often. And it's got this big conveyor belt on a wagon that they spin round and it can unload just on sidings. It doesn't need self-discharging names in the title. That was up Kettering Way, I think it was. Sorry, let me read that again. It was... No, it wasn't. It was Barrow upon Saw in uh, Leicestershire. And uh, it had, the boom had come out across the track, so imagine a boom sticking out here and the 222 went into it. So the track took a nice big chunk out the top of the cab. I think the driver was alright. Yeah, it was shaken but uninjured. No injuries amongst the 85 passengers. But the uh, boom operator, the guy that actually was doing it, got pretty badly hurt, if I remember rightly. I have read the report, but I don't think I've read it all. Enjoying the scenery, if I'm honest, on this run.
I like the little reflection in the window there, I do like that. Three one nine. I will. I say we haven't had any strange just trains. Um, AI. Oh, which is quite nice. I like this bendy section as well. I think you learn to know a route well by driving stopping services, but I think you really get a feel for routes doing a bit more of a non-stop high speed run on them. Like you learn bits that are good fun like that. Come on, mate. Sit down silent, will ya? To be honest, I'm terrible for that. It's always my phone going off somewhere. And I've got, like, do you know the, the iPhone standard ringtone? It's a marimba, whatever it is. And it goes into Robert Miles' children version. It's pretty good. So I find myself leaving it on so I can hear it going into the Robert Miles' children bit. sound nice. I might go back to the old vegetation on this route. I just don't think it looks very British. facing camera there, I think so. I like that in the perspex so you can check it. Might see brake plunger, horn. Same as the Voyager. Right, 
Yeah, I quite like it. I know uh, Mr. Dreamliner, uh, Josh, he does some really cool mid and mainline scenarios. It's sort of his baby, really. So I'll definitely be doing a few of those when I get the VP-185 pack. I'm uh, very much looking forward to that. It's a bit dull to drive, I won't lie. It doesn't really grab me. It's finickety with the speed. I suppose the route's a bit like that as well, being only a 110 mile an hour route with a 125 mile an hour capable train. There's always going to be compromises somewhere, isn't there? What do you guys think of it? If any of you guys have got it, let me know what you think below. Or even point me in the direction. I know Mr. Dreamline's got some great scenarios, but if there's any others you know about, stick them in the description, the comments for me. Let me see what's around. Something a bit more fun. I mean, I remember watching a video, Squirrel did a video of this. Just Train seems to use Squirrel for their uh, pre-release stuff. And as much as he's good for lots of things, I just don't, Train seems just, it's, it, you can tell it's not his main interest, I think. I think if you look at the passion he puts into things like Flight Sim and Eurotrap, you can see he really gets it. Train Sim, I think he enjoys, but it's just not... I think with us train geeks out there, you've got to really know your crap, really, haven't you? Maybe picked a slightly shorter route to do a sort of review thing with this train more than anything. First look. I think I said in the last video, it, it just baffles me that I'm going to Bedford. Because Bedford to me by road, 505, what is it, 40 minute journey, if that. And there's a very cool swim pool, it was when I was a kid. I haven't been for a few years now, but the Bedford Oasis. There's a big glass pyramid. It is like the pinnacle of my love for late 80s 
early 90s architecture. If you watched my video with the Class 47 on the London to Brighton, the East Croydon station, that's the sort of thing I like and that, that's even a little bit fancy for me, but the, oh, the Bedford Oasis is unreal. Well, it's probably a bit, it was very dated. I mean, last time I was there, the inside, it really could do with a bit of a refurb. It was all looking a bit tired, but as a kid in the early 90s, that place was like something out of a film. And I love swimming. I love water parks, everything like that. Centre Parks is one of my favourite places in the world. Um, Cambridge is really badly placed for anything like that. We don't have a decent water park around. I just got time capture a lot when I was up in Scotland. Um, Bedford Oasis in Bedford, funnily enough. Every birthday, in, every birthday I think, or around a birthday, or my brother's birthday, or somebody else's birthday. If there was somebody at school having a party, we were going to Bedford Oasis. From that, the only other time I really did anything in Bedford was the electronics auctions. That was actually where I used to buy the blue LEDs for the 3310s. And elastomers, which were like a gasket to go around screens for uh, 8890s. Back up to green. Two and a half miles in, what is that called? Is it Elstow? Yeah, Elstow Aggregates Discharge. Cool. Been a bit brave with the speed here, as I said, I've tested the brakes slightly, but not massively. It's a pretty decent retardation rate for step one. What will really surprise me, right, is because I don't know if you guys know the, the politics behind this. Uh, break thing with a Voyager. Basically, everybody moaned about it. Lots and lots and lots and lots of people and Just Trains came back and they said, no, no, no. With the figures we've got, it adds up. So yeah, it should take two and a half miles to stop it from 125. So, I'm pretty sure that the why is that going jumping up to the um that the Meridian has the same brakes as the Voyager and they seem pretty decent to me. Definitely got better brakes. Just trains, that's naughty. That's really naughty. Now, if I'm wrong about this and Meridians have different brakes, then fair enough. But if I look this up, and I've got, I think I've got some bits on the braking of these somewhere anyway. If Meridians have the same brakes as the Voyager, and you've fixed the brakes on this, but you haven't done a hot fix for the 220, 
That's a pretty poor show. I know there are patches available for the for the 220 on UKTS and things like that. Right, that's me. See, again, I was trying to be really positive about Just Train's product. I actually quite liked it. It wasn't terrible. And then it winds me up at the end. Well done, driver. Did a good job this evening. Apologies for the brake issues earlier in the journey. Thanks ever so much for watching, guys. Catch you soon.